greatest things in our life is morning devotions. And we don't miss it very often. And even if we get up too early in the morning and we've got to rush and we're, and we're doing something and it doesn't even come to mind because we're in a hurry, we'll be going down the road and, and uh, if we're taking a trip, we've got a, we call it our, our book bag and it has, it, has, um, it has this Bible in it and this Bible is the uh, New Life uh, Application Study Bible. Or it's actually the newest there. It says Life Application Study Bible. And so then Donna reads to me. When we're home, I read to her. And uh, we've done that. The only time I, we were just talking about this, the only time that we didn't do that uh, was when I was in the military because for almost a year, I was in Germany by myself. And it seemed like a year, I guess it was only six months. But, and we didn't find a church right away because we didn't, we didn't know where to look. And then I think I ran into a pastor uh, just, and I thought, wow, well, what are you doing? Where do you meet? And, and uh, so I went and we started going, going to his church. And um, we've just always done that. I took Donna to church before we got married. And uh, she was just, you know, we, we just had a, a kind of thing. We both grew up in, a, in uh, broken homes, and we just fell in love. Wow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Precious. A pair of fives. Mm -hmm. And one more, because I knew her almost a year before I got married. And so God's just been good to us. The devotions are rich. Um, sometimes they're convicting. And uh, other times they lift us up. And even to be convicted lifts us up because it shows us what we need to do to correct in our lives. What kind of mistakes we're making. And uh, we're fed by the bread of life daily. And we drink of the living water daily. And it's, it's just precious to be able to do that. And so what the Lord showed me is, um, Ed... You do this every day. I want you to focus on, on devotions. And so I just want to encourage you. Uh, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. Um, I assume that you read the Bible every day and are encouraged by it. And uh, if I had a stack of 10 Bibles, I would hand them out. This one right here. Because the footnotes are so... Uh, so awesome. There's over a hundred, I've said it before, there's over a hundred Bible scholars contribute to these footnotes. And they are so uplifting. And if you can't see it in the scripture, they ask questions. Mm -hmm. So how are you doing on that? They ask, they ask that numerous times. So are, are, you, are you reaching out? Are you being a witness? They, they ask these questions. It's just super helpful. So, I want, I want to, what I did is I went over uh, some, of, some of our uh, devotions that we have and I almost had to change it to the one for this morning because the Psalms was so good. <laughs> and I went, oh, it's too late to do that. But that's how it is. It's so beautiful. And I'm going to go back there to Psalms and... I'm just going to, it's not part of the footnotes. I mean, it's not part of the, what's up on the screen. But I want to read a little bit of it. It's so beautiful. Um, it's poetic. And it's just very uplifting. And what we do is we have a, a read through the Bible in a year, Bible. It's King James, which is, you know, where I, what I memorized from. And uh, so it's, it's uh, what we do. I go to that, I flip it over. Okay, this is where we're supposed to read today. And then I come back here. And I've got, foot, I've got bookmarkers in there for where I read yesterday and where I'm going to read the next day. I move it. And uh, 
when when there is no relief in sight, God, God understands even our deepest misery. And the, at the head of each one, there's a theme, and you won't you won't find that in most King James versions. Has a theme of what it's about. Um, devoted trust in times of deep trouble. Mm. And when I saw that devoted, I thought, boy, that's right on. So this is it. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I'm devoted to you. Save me, for I serve and trust you. You are my God. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I'm calling on you constantly. Give to me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love for all who ask for your help. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I'm in trouble, and you will answer me. And I've said it numerous times, you know, in, in the last couple of years, it has been desperate times when I called out to God, mm. and He answered me. He answered me on the spot. When I fell off my deck, fell 16 feet, landed on my back, my head was resting on concrete. <laughs> I had to have my head up or else he cushioned my fall greatly. And I was gasping for air. When you hit your certain vertebrae in your back, some of you have done it, it just takes your breath away. Well, I had a 16 foot uh, weight. I gained weight on the way down, I'm sure. <laughs> and I cried out to God, don't let me lose consciousness. And I didn't. I was talking to Donna this morning. Maybe it would have been better. It would have been a lot less painful if I could have woke up later on. But uh, God is good. He answers us like that. Yeah. Yeah. During the COVID, I prayed every night, Lord, help me wake up in the morning. Because I'd stop breathing during the day. And I know I was stopping breathing during the night. Because it was just continuous. And uh, I'd be sitting there. And there was some, there was some gaps of space of, in, in timing. It wasn't like regular, like the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. But every, every once in a while, I'd take a gasp. And I'd go, whoa, I stopped breathing. And so I just cried out to God. I cried out to God when it first hit me. I was sitting in my semi, and I was, you know, supposed to be doing a job, and things started like going like that. And I called my son. Or he was talking to me. I said, "Cody, if I lose connection with you, if I stop talking, you know where I'm at." So he could call 911. Uh, I was, you know, I was the same thing. Lord, don't let me lose consciousness, and I didn't. Within an hour, I'd taken a shower. I was waiting for my surprise that my daughter daughter was bringing to me and she helped nurse me from California as I drove all the way back to Chicago to drop the load and then go to the yard. She, they had all the medication that I need wow. to fight the COVID and uh, my son come out of Oxnard, California, he and his wife that had had COVID and they had all their stuff and they came and they ministered to me, kept me going. And I drove 2,000 miles. I had to stop truck stops or rest areas and rest. But God held me up. And Hallelujah. I got to, wow. I dropped the load and I called dispatch and I said, uh, I need a load to the yard. And when I get there, I have to stop. And he said, I'm trying to decide which load to give you. It was already set up. God had already set it up. So I stopped a couple rest areas on the way back and one of them I didn't even nap. I just had to stop and take a break. And God got me through that. So when we cry out, God answers our prayers. Uh, this is, Glory to God. I read his word all the time. And I'm going, I just look over at Donna. And, I, and my son listens to us almost every day as we read. He's on the phone in Boise. And he shares devotions with us. And, and uh, it just ministers to us. It is the living word. It's the living word. It's alive. It's as close as we can get to Jesus on earth. You want to talk to Jesus. You want to hear from God. It's right here. This is, this is our strength. It is so much the bread of life and the living water. So much. So, let's go into uh, Psalm 84. And I wanted to tell you this. You've got your phones. I don't have a problem with, you know, phones. And, and 
I use Bible Gateway all the time. Um, I sit here and I use Bible Gateway if I want to look up something. I can change translation and all that. But, um, the only problem I have with all electronics is so many people now do not carry a Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I think Satan's probably going, yes. You know, it's it's part of the testimony to be walking into a church, you know, carrying a Bible. People see that. And sure. they probably know what we're doing. You know, even if they don't know this is a church, we're walking into some place. A number of people going in the same place. They know what we're doing. But carrying a Bible, sometimes I get convicted about having my phone. I mean, that's a shortcut. And it's quick. But... Uh, Amen. Uh, just we just need to get in the word and not be ashamed of it. So in Psalm 84, 1 through 4, it says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies. I long, yes, I faint with longing, to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young. At a place near your altar, O Lord of heaven's armies, my King and my God. What joy for those who can live in your house, always singing your praises. What joy. What a joy to come and to hear God's word and to sing praises to him. Awesome choice of songs this morning. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, And we, we sang about what we experience in church. Uh, church is fellowship. Pastor and I were talking about it yesterday. Church is fellowship. It's getting together. And uh, it's being obedient to the Lord. He says, don't forsake the fellowshipping of yourselves with the brethren. Because it's uplifting. And it's our family. And sometimes our family here we're tighter with than the family that we're raised with. Sometimes there's conflict there, and, and sometimes they don't love the Lord like we do. And so we come together and encourage each other, and we build each other up. Amen. So, Amen. what the footnote on that was, the writer longed to get away from the daily grind of life to meet God inside his dwelling place, his holy temple. And when I saw that... Hmm. Holy temple. We meet him in his holy temple. This is his holy temple. Part of it. We know there's a physical place and it's going to be rebuilt soon. But this is his holy temple. It's been bought with a price, been bought with the blood of Christ, bought and paid for. We're his. And we have the greatest greatest opportunity to have the greatest life in the world. How could life be better without God? How could it be better than to be able to walk completely in the Holy Spirit? Again, Pastor and I were talking yesterday about about singing the canon. You're good. <laughs> and um, you didn't see me on back up. And um, <laughs> taking a step. We, we want to we're, we're like this, you know, wanting to do something. The Lord wants you to do something too. He wants you to take that step. And we ask that Lord intervene, Holy Spirit intervene. And if that's not the direction you want us to go, tell us. So we pray for sensitivity right. so that we can hear, hear the Holy Spirit and then get the guidance that we need. Um, I'm not super good at it, but numerous times... I've, Don and I were getting ready to go see the kids over in Boise, and we had the vehicle loaded, and I was, and I was already getting to check in the spirit, and I started to put the last suitcase in, and Donna was standing there, and I just looked at her, I said, "Honey, we can't go." Mm -hmm. I said the Holy Spirit is saying, "Don't wow. do it," and took the suitcase back in the house. What was the reason? Mine had just been a test. Mm -hmm. Might have just been to see if we'd be obedient. Mm -hmm. And so we were. Did I avoid getting hit by a semi? I was driving my car. Or, you know, did, did I avoid a rock slide? I go through some canyons. 
We don't know that, but we have to do it in faith believing. Exactly. And later, I think even within the week, we got the release to go and see uh, Cody and his family. So we just really need to be uh, sensitive and really focus and praying diligently with, uh, uh, I can't imagine not being our heart. Our heart's desire should be to walk us close to the, to the Trinity Thank you, Jesus. than walking without Him. I don't want to do it. I've made some stupid mistakes in my life. I don't want to. I don't want to do those things anymore. You know, I want to walk in righteousness. And the thing that's encouraging me, and has encouraged me, and does daily, is that as we go through the Word, we see how how much the Father loves us. And when we consider the things we've done in our life that we regret, if we could write the book over, we'd change a chapter or two. God loves us anyway. He created us. He knows what He created. He created man with a free will. And, and until, we can, until we can come into that relationship with the Lord, we fall. Hopefully not often, but we'll fail. Sometimes we lose it and uh, just go the wrong direction sometimes. I mentioned the military earlier when I was over there by myself. Um, I didn't have Donna there, who's major support in my life, and I got mixed up in the drug culture. And uh, uh, criminal investigation, the CID in the military, had me listed as a drug trafficker. And we knew we knew one of the CID guys. We. We identified him and, and knew who he was. We got on a train. We were about, I don't know, within less than 100 miles from Frankfurt. And on the train, we saw him get on the train. And we saw him on the street. He was watching us. And, uh, you know, it was bad. But uh, it was bad enough so at one point, Donna said, I'm going home. Mm. Mm. It was like, here's the drugs. And she said, I'm going home. No, you're not. Praise God. Praise God. It took, uh, it took a shot from the doctor to bring me down. I was so strung out. Wow. While I was up there in Frankfurt, we came across a construction site. And they dug a deep basement to go you know, for their, for their basement. It was deep. And I stood there, looked and looked down in there, and the enemy was saying, you can jump down there and it won't even hurt you. And the Holy Spirit almost physically turned me and walked me away from that. And, uh, I don't know about you, but Satan has tried numerous times to kill me to take my life. Didn't want me standing here today. Doesn't like me having devotions every day. Mm -hmm. Doesn't like me raising my kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Boy, I tell you, yeah. I'm proud of my kids. Got one that struggles greatly, but uh, one of his brothers just bought him a real nice Bible. And, and he posted on Facebook how grateful he was for it. Wow. And, uh, He's had some de major defeats in his life, and uh, he's bro he's broken heart. But uh, we encourage him. We pray for him a lot. Uh, so I, I just uh, want to encourage you, especially um, your family members and, and your friends. God wants us to reach out to them. He hasn't called everybody to go out on the street. But he has called everybody to do what they can and witness every chance they get. I can't imagine. Breaks my heart to think about anybody having to experience hell. I can't believe I'm not on the street of life for hell. And it's still messed up. <laughs> Reminds me of when I broke it. Fortunately, it's not that bad, but. 
Um, I think God was uh, using circumstances. I'll never blame God for that. But God uses circumstances. Satan meant it for bad. He meant it for evil. God's using it for good. I want him to channel me into what he wants me to do. Right? If, he ha if I'm so stubborn, if I love something so much that I won't answer the call, I need changed. Mm -hmm. Because I've had a call in my life over and over. Said, I, I, I think the first time I shared the pulpit, um, I was going to a, a Christian church and I was getting ready to go to a Bible college and the pastor had me come and share. I think I was 22, 23. And uh, through the years, I, every church I ever have gone into, I've tried to help the pastor. Some of them were too big. Um, they, they had so much help. And that's great. That's a wonderful thing. But in any, any churches like under even up to 100, I've been able to share the word out. And, uh, and I've loved doing it. But the Lord's finally getting me uh, down to where He will use me. He's always been able to use me. And when I've yielded to it, and when I've worked side by side with pastors, they've said, how would you like to you know, share the word? And I've enjoyed doing it. And uh, God may give you a message that He wants you to share too. And I commend you, Helen, because you're searching, wanting to know exactly what God wants you to do, want direction, and, and when we yield to that, we'll be blessed. No doubt about it. So, um, in, in verse 10 there, and 10 and 11 says, For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. O oh, Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. And that is, hallelujah, evident for us today. Mm -hmm. Do you have joy in your heart because we're here? Because we can come and see our family and sing praises to the Lord? And uh, frequently when we're singing, I can... I can see ourselves uh, st standing on the clouds with a mass of mm. Christians in glory, singing to the Lord, singing with the angels. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about voice! <laughs> I'll guarantee you, they've got it. they've got it perfect. I'm sure. There's no rattle in their voice. They hit every note, you know, and. I've never seen this before, but are we going to watch some of them play in the heart? Are we going to be able to watch King David play the heart? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I'll bet. There's all kinds of surprises for us up there. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord. On verse 11, the footnote, this verse does not promise that God will give us everything we think is good but that he will not withhold from us what is permanently good. Mm -hmm. He will give us the means to walk along his paths, but we must do the walking. Yeah. We've got to take that step forward. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. And I, I shouldn't put, Amen. actually put that in there, but it was part of that stanza. That's why I got in there. But that's a true statement, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'd rather, I'd mm -hmm. rather um, have a single day in, in the courts of God. Can, can you get a hold of that word right now in the courts of God? Mm -hmm. Would that be incorrect? We're, I, I believe we're in the courts of God. It's, heaven is going to be like this. We're going to learn continually. When, when we die and go to heaven, we haven't heard the last message. We're going to we're going to get more and more. Yeah, and 
and won't even be found in here. There's there's more coming. I'm sure of it. God's going to share a whole lot with us and, and help us to grow. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to His people, His faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely His salvation is near those who fear Him, that His glory may dwell in our land. And we need it. Yeah. We need it. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Well, if we're walking in righteousness and walking in, walking, um, in the Spirit, then uh, we're following the right path and, and he'll prepare the way for us. In that read through the Bible, if, if you've ever used it, you read the Old Testament book, besides besides Psalms and Proverbs, you read a book in the Old Testament, and then you read Psalm and Proverb, and then you read in the New Testament. So all th three of those things. So over in Jeremiah 23, 28, it says, let these false prophets tell their dreams, but let my true messengers faithfully proclaim my very word. There's a difference between straw and grain. <laughs> and and uh, what it's talking about in here and in other places that I've read recently is that uh, we need, to, as, we, as we listen to messages, blind and everybody else's, anything I say can be used against me. We're supposed to listen, and if it doesn't sound right, go check it out in the Word. The Word is our authority. The Word is what's right. And uh, the reason I was looking so... Uh, looking back and forth there is this translation is different than what I brought up on the screen. So they've already revised it. The NIV, they've already revised it since this Bible. Yeah. And I was going, what? I like the King James. There you go. Yeah. But, uh, so, what it says there, False prophets and true prophets are as different as straw and grain. Worthless straw is useless for food and blows away with the wind. It cannot compare in value to nurse to nursing grain, the bread of life. To share the gospel is a great responsibility because the way we present it and live it will encourage people either to accept it or reject it. Whether we speak from a pulpit, teach in a class, or share with friends, we are entrusted with accurately communicating and loving our God's Word. As you share God's Word with friends and neighbors, they will look for its effectiveness in your life. Unless it has changed you, why should they think it can change them? If you preach God's Word, make sure you're also living it. And I think I can do a better job. I'm not always, I'm not always the best witness, even in my family. We have a family that we were raised playing games. Mm. I am super competitive. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to compete. But if I can't compete and I have to just sit there and take the whipping, I don't like it. Mm -mm. And I don't manifest pleasure. <laughs> Who likes to be a loser? <laughs> exactly. Well, I can't I can't just suck it up and keep my mouth shut. Anyway. I gotta work on that. <laughs> <laughs> There's my confession. All right. There's the test. I beat him three so times in a row. That's oh, okay. <laughs> okay, in over in uh, tw chapter 27, in verse five and six. These these should be on the screen. Well, but the footnotes aren't because the footnotes were. 
would have doubled what was on the screen. And I started typing, and then I went, you know what? I don't have to do that. I don't have time to do that. So, hence I'm reading. So it's 27, uh, 5 and 6. And part of why I'm doing it this way is because I want you to kind of get a feel for what I do every day uh, in going through devotions. And I, I just want to encourage you to do it. It's just so very uplifting. So verse 5 and 6. With my great strength and powerful arm, I made the earth and all its people and every animal. I can give these things of mine to anyone I choose. Now I will give your conscience to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who is my servant. I have put everything, even the wild animals, under his control. The point I want to make here is that God can use anybody, a non-Christian, to get our attention. Mm -hmm. He can use circumstances to get our attention. Nebuchadnezzar was not God's man, but he got blessed. He got all the assets. He took all the assets out of Jerusalem. He took them out of the temple. And of course, he made him feel richer. Not because he was God's man. And God wasn't trying to bless him, but he knew that would happen. He was teaching the Israelites a lesson there. You haven't followed me. I've got the prophet, Jeremiah, has been preaching to you and, and giving you words from me for years, and you haven't listened to me. And finally, the Lord says, He even said before he did it, he said again, after all the other times he said, if you will, then I will. If you'll turn around and start worshiping me and, instead of rocks and stones and Asherah poles and all the other things that they worship, mm -hmm. and killing your children and burning them and sacrificing them and throwing them in the dump, if you'll stop doing that, I'll turn my heart back to you. But they wouldn't do it. And so they faced uh, being... Um, exported. The Lord exported them sure did. from Jerusalem into Babylon. They stayed there 70 years at one point. There was different times they went into captivity. The Lord brought them back. They went right back into sin. And so we have to watch it really close. Where What will happen to us if we just turn away from God? It scares me. It scares me. It scares me uh, to not be obedient. Um, to every word of God, I, I want to go through and I want to write down everything that could be considered a commandment. And make sure I'm doing every one of them. Because as Christians, that's what we're responsible for. We've got the word. They went to the the first part of Christianity, they didn't have all this. They had the Old Testament, but they didn't have the New Testament. They didn't have all of the Pauline epistles, which I just love them. And so, um, I just want to encourage, encourage everybody to just... So, on 5 and 6, it said, God punished the people of Judah in an unusual way by appointing a foreign ruler to be his servant. Nebuchadnezzar was not appointed to proclaim God's message, but to fulfill God's promise of judgment on sin. Mm -hmm. Because God is in control of all events, He uses whomever He wants. God may use unlikely people or circumstances to correct or teach you. Be ready to accept His guidance and correction, even if it comes from unexpected sources. And so we even have to be sensitive to that. Somebody confronts us. What do we do? Calm, cool, and collected. Hmm. How'd that guy know that? He's reading my mail. Yeah. Prophets speak over you. How do you know that? Tom Stammen, whom, whom uh, heads Impact Ministries International, he's a, he's a sidewalk prophet. And he can read your mail. He didn't know what it was, but when Don and I were over at Newcastle, 
he prophesied over us after his message and presentation. Different ones would go up and he'd, he'd give them a prophecy or a word of knowledge. He said, Satan will try and kill you both. Hmm. But he won't be successful. But he won't be <laughs> successful. And he has since that prophecy twice. COVID and the fall off the balcony tried to kill me. I wasn't sure it wasn't happening a couple times. And uh, God brought me through it. And uh, I would just, just encourage anybody in any situation, cry out to God. He knows when you're desperate. He knows when you're desperate. And he'll, he'll answer you. Unless it's your time. And uh, sometimes we've all wondered, hmm, you know would have been better. <laughs> yeah. But, no. I have too much to live for. And we all do. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in, in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God. Is that different or what? As for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it is with you. So, anyway, I found some differentiation there a number of times. And the footnote starts with verse 3, so let's read on. You live, this, you live this way already, and we encourage you to do so even more. For you remember what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will is for you to be holy, to stay away from sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a fellow believer in this matter by violating his wife. For the Lord avenges all such sins as we have solemnly warned you before. Now we read the next verse. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not obeying human teaching, is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God, who gives His Holy Spirit to you. And um, everybody struggles with sin, right? And if we're really close to the Lord, if we're sensitive to the Lord, we will feel, at some point, we will feel the, the not only the condemnation, we'll feel the conviction. What's Satan's trick? Temptation, we fall. Condemnation, we fell. That's his trick. Tempt you, and then get you to fall, and then accuse you. You hypocrite. You sinner. You're so weak. You know what's fun? In your face, Satan. You've tricked me before. I don't fall for that no more. And we just have to, what, get the transfusion, the blood of Christ, the injection. We get saved, but do we sin? It's covered. But we have to confess, and ask, confess it and ask for forgiveness. God has set that up for us. All my goats would be dead if I had to sacrifice for my sin. <laughs> You're not that that would be Pope. Oh. Um, I love my girls. <laughs> so, um, reading on down through there, this song popped into my heart yesterday as I was working on this. And uh, just look at the words I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I'll learn to walk in your ways, and step by step, you'll lead me, and I will follow you all my days. Needs to be mm -hmm. part of our testimony. That's just strong. So, Pastor Ed's going to come and play that, and we're going to sing it to, to end, the, end the message. And I could have gone on and on. I've got some here I didn't even get in there the Lord gave me. Um, this.
play that for just go ahead and play that for a minute and I'll the Lord gave me these verses uh, Psalm 119 anybody know Psalm 119 11 you probably you know the verse you don't know the address that's where I am sometimes thy word have I hid in my heart O Lord that I might not sin against thee study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that not be ashamed 2 Corinthians or uh, 2 Timothy 2 and uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, um, um, all scripture is given for inspiration of God, for doctrine. This is how I remember stuff. Doctrine, reproof, doctrine, DR. Doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and complete. So we spend our time in the Word. Pastor, I mentioned this yesterday. We were talking about it. All authority is given unto me. Jesus said this. Why? To send us into the kingdom. Go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then he says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, Matthew 25, 21. And because we are obedient, then we get to experience the joy of not just being obedient here on earth, but the joy of, of going into the into heaven with him and spending eternity with the Father. With our brothers and sisters that have already gone. So we just need to be sensitive. And I never got to one of the scriptures. It was to just to be diligent about praying for everyone in our body. And we've got to find our prayer list. We lost our prayer list again. Satan hides it from us. It has many names from even from many years ago from different churches. And one place on Saturday. We divided it so on Saturday we pray for every church that we've been in and we pray for the pastors. And even when we don't know their names anymore because some of them have changed. But God wants us to be diligent in our prayers and lifting each other up. And uh, that's our strength. We might be in a place where we're not praying because we're so down and dejected. But when others are lifting us up, they're holding us up. And that's that's part of our part of our uh, responsibility as Christians is to just be faithful in prayer. I'd like to pray over everybody before we leave. Yeah, be good. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Yes. Pray that it ministers, Lord God, and for my family. Pray that you touch each heart, Father. Help us. Today.